song, but yeah, I just can't help all right. it. Yeah, Okay, what's this? This is um, a jigging kit for the other metal. It's a precision fixturing clamp, um, and I believe it was even used in Noah Pedro's video. Um, but it has these like little alignment clamps and toes, and so you can instead of taping things down, you can um, fixture them in place and clamp them down into the bed of the other mill, which has um, screw mount holes, so you can basically attach them. So I'm going to take this home because I actually want this for. Um, the other mill we have at home, especially if you're milling metals. Oh yeah, can you hide us? Yes, if you have another mill in your apartment like we do. Like we do, and if you want to mill stuff and you don't want to, and you, especially if you want to do double-sided boards and get the alignment perfect, um, this will give you that perfect alignment that you want and you can, you can see that you can slide little toes in and clamp them down and clamp down your material um, extremely well. So it's a very good accessory for once you got your other mill and you really want to fixture things really strongly, especially especially metals that if you want to mill them because it's a little tougher on the bit, you don't want them to vibrate. Okay, next up, USB complete. It's a book. It's good. This is a great book. This is one of my favorite technical books by Jan Axelson, um, who wrote a bunch of books on different protocols, but um, this is the best book on USB. Even if you are just using a USB bootloader or you know a mass storage device or HID and, and you don't, you're using a library, it's still really, really handy to read this, it just has all the details about um, USB internals, and there's a lot of specifics you need to know. Um, and I referenced this on the video that we did where we talked to a USB device with raw uh, H, uh, control packets. Um, I learned how to do that by reading USB complete and then you know, referencing what I learned from that to um, the Python code. I read this back when it was like second edition. Now it's fifth edition, it has USB 3.1. I realized that I lent out my book and I didn't have a copy anymore. And then I was like, well, you know what? We should actually be carrying this book. And so yeah. um, I picked up a couple copies. It's, it's a really great. It's good for anybody who does anything with USB. You don't have to be developing a low level um, peripheral or host controller. You still want to know this stuff. OK, next up, some teensy-like stuff. This is prop shields, prop wings, prop add-ons for the Teensy 3.2 and uh, 3.1 and LC. These are handy little um, add-on boards. So this is designed essentially for props, but I can kind of for anything you want. And I'll show this on the overhead, I think. So you get your Teensy 3.2, for example. And there's two versions. So let me get this open. So, um, this basically you you would solder this on to here and uh, there's two versions there's this version that has um, these chips in place oh it doesn't oh, they don't have the LEDs that's right um, it has uh, this accelerometer and magnetometer and gyroscope and um, temperature and barometric pressure sensor altitude sensor and this version doesn't it doesn't have the the temperature barometric pressure SLS, accelerometer, gyroscope, or magnetometer. So it's a lot less expensive because those are quite expensive sensors. But if you want something that has a lot of sensors on it, um, grab this one. And if you just want uh, the other accessories, grab this one. So that's the difference. But uh, both of them have a two watt amplifier and it uses the, uh, I think it uses the DAC output, so it's mono, but you get two watts uh, output, probably class D amplifier. Um, it has an eight megabyte flash, SPI flash storage, which is very handy if you want to uh, store audio or sensor data in it, either reading out or storing. And it has two um, five volt output pins. So that's really good for driving NeoPixels or uh, dot star LEDs, anything that needs five volt or prefers five volt input or output uh, to it. And then, yeah, you just plug your Teensy on top and you solder it in place. And it's kind of like an all-in-one. It, it's kind of interesting because I'm designing a lot of wings. And I'm like, this is an interesting idea. It has kind of all the things you want for a lot of projects. If you want data storage or, or audio playback, um, amplifier, only mono, but that's good enough for most people, and uh, full tend off sensing for uh, motion. And this uses um, a chipset I've never used before. It's uh, from an XP Freescale, and I didn't even know that Freescale made accelerometers, magnetometers, or gyroscopes, but apparently they do, which I, I had not seen the Freescale. I've seen like, you know, all these other different brands, but Freescale now has them, um, Freescale slash NXP, and they also wrote and released um, a, a fusion, sensor fusion code that apparently does a pretty good job of orientation. 
And that might be interesting. These are fairly inexpensive chips. They're only like three dollars altogether. So it's a very good alternative to the Bino Zero Five Five, which has Fusion, but it's built in. This you put it on the chip, but there's code available for both like eight bit processors and like thirty two bit processors. So you get like the kind of like super fancy and not so fancy um, version. And I'd like to try that out because I've I've never. It's kind of cool that NXP Someone's released. Someone's interested in a new chip. I'm interested in this yeah. new chip because if they if they released calibration, because like you never get that. Yeah. Usually you have so to. So what you're saying is, if you're a chip manufacturer and you want a lot of people to use your stuff, what do you got to do? You should probably release some sort of documentation that's not under NDA. Yeah. Okay. Because if you get if right. there's some chips where they have fusion data, they'll give you orientation output, but you have to sign all sorts of documents. Anyways. Okay. So we got. Sorry, that yeah. was a, a rant. So you get, did you show both of them? I did. So oh, yeah, yeah you had this one, which doesn't have the chips. No, a little less expensive, but really handy. So you have the power of the TNC 3.2, and then you get all these awesome accessories to make um, cosplay props or anything that makes audio yeah. or, or projects that just do things. Okay. And you've got this super powerful Cortex M4 as well. All right, next up. Cable, cable, cable. It's just a cable, but it's a pretty cool cable. Yeah. So this cable, and I'll show it when I do the demo later, but it has um, one micro USB input and two micro USB outputs. Yeah. And one of the outputs is power only, that's the shorter cable, and one is power plus data. So it's kind of a handy way if you have one micro USB like charging cable, you can use it for data, you know, you can use one for sync and data, sync yeah. and charge and one for charge. It's good for like Raspberry Pis and stuff where you might want to use one power adapter and then yeah. use it to power both a display or like NeoPixels or something and also the Pi itself. I'll tell you the application that, that, that I want. Yeah. And uh, this finally solves it. So I have a, a, a hotspot, one of these like little portable Wi-Fi things. Mm -hmm. And when you plug it in to charge it, it like turns on and it shows up as a hard drive and like all of a That's sudden right. everything. That's right, you can select which one yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, so I don't like that. I just want to charge it. Yeah. But for a phone or something else, I want it to be data. I want it to go through mm -hmm. USB. So this is perfect for that. Cause some devices, please don't ever want. To, I don't want you to ever talk to my computer ever. That's true. This is yeah. one. Of, this is like those, um, like the USB condoms. But it's like you get a choice. You just use the long cable. Yeah. That's what they're called. I don't want devices to talk to my computer unless they think it's okay. I just want to charge them. But yeah. So I'm, use the yeah. short cable when you just want to charge, no data syncing, and the long one when you want to do data syncing as well as charging. Yeah. But so it's good for, like, you can choose one or the other or both. Anyways, a person emailed and suggested it, and I was like, this is actually it's a, a good pretty idea. good idea for a cable. Very handy. Okie dokie. I'm using it right now to power yeah. these two demos. Okay. And then the star of the show besides you this week is the Feather Laura. What is this thing? Uh, this is uh, another generation of Feather. So this is the Feather 32U4. It's our kind of a pseudo standard for small battery powered microcontrollers. This uses an Atmega 32U4, same chip that's on the Flora Arduino Leonardo Arduino Micro. It has battery charging built in, has built in USB with a um, bootloader. It works great with the Arduino ID. And we have a little bit of space left over, and so we usually put some sort of Wi Fi or Bluetooth module. And this time we're putting in a LoRa radio. So that little green board, which is over there. Um, is a LoRa radio. It's a Semtec 27, sorry, 1272 LoRa radio um, on a module that's made by Hope RF. They just add the uh, analog components. And um, this is really neat. This is a, a new kind of radio technology which uses a, a, a sort of a spread spectrum, a broad you know, sort of a spectrum of, of, it sends the data over multiple frequencies. And I guess the way they encode it or the way they transmit it, I actually don't know the details, allows it to go much, much further than most um, FSK data where it just switches between two frequencies. Because this is switching through multiple frequencies, it can go much, much further. Um, so we saw, like, a, did a demo in Maryland with... Um, yeah. With a it Todd, can work with Adafruit IO. And he went 1.2 miles. So that's that's pretty standard. We, you know, I've noticed that it goes about one, one, one and a half miles in city or kind of hilly. Um, if you use with just basic wire antenna, if you're using directional antennas and you tweak the settings to be, um, to you, you know, retransmit and use maybe slower uh, data rates, you can. I saw one person who reported they got up to 20 kilometers. So it, it is possible. This is something we're going to be trying out with a, like a balloon to see, you know, can you basically use a 20 dBm radio and listen from, not space, not even near space, but, you know, as it's falling, 
you could still uh, track it. Um, these are very cool radios. They're a lot more expensive because they're patented. The technology is patented. And so you're not going to, even though it's, it's published how it works um, to, to get these chips, you have to pay a lot more for the licensing. So these are licensed uh, lower radios, but um, they are quite neat and they go very, very, very far and they work great in urban environments too. We, we walked around and we got like three quarters of a mile yeah. up cross blocks, you know, so the signal had to be bouncing off of multiple buildings to get to us, but we were able to get it from, you know, three quarters of a mile away in a, a very busy urban environment. So okay. this is, we have the normal RFM, 900 megahertz and 433 radios, and then the LoRa version. Okay. You can't use them to talk to each other. Sure. Yeah, but um, you can uh, get one of each or decide which ones you want. So this is our demo. So I'm using that cable to charge both of these up but they're charged so I can unplug them. Okay, so both of them have a lower radio and these are, this is the Feather. This is the Feather with a um, OLED uh, side by side and then this has the Feather with the OLED on top of it. So that's the radio underneath. And I have cute little wire antennas. You can add a UFL connector if you wanna have a larger antenna, but for this simple demo, um, the really neat thing is this works from within the elevator. Like I had this yeah. transmitting and we were in the elevator and I was still getting signal, so yeah. it's pretty pretty cool. And then I just have it so when I press the little buttons on here, it shows up over there. It says I press that button A, B, and C. And then if I go here and press button A, B, and C, it shows up this over here. This could be like here. a mile away. But imagine that this was up to 20 kilometers away. <laughs> it's pretty much the, the deal, um, depending on, on your antenna and okay. how directional you are. But this is for the but 120 milliamps of current that is being drawn, you can go very far. You have you get quite a bit of distance, and you can set the gain on these as well to be much lower. So, given that you have so much link budget or whatever, if you are able to uh, talk to the other radio you want and without any difficulty, you can always lower the amount of current you're using. You can uh, pare down the amplifier to use less current. So. You know, at, at, at total utter sleep mode, 300 microamps, peak transmit about 10 mil, milliseconds, 120 milliamps. But you can get down to maybe 30 or 40 milliamps transmit if you don't mind having the uh, transmit be like 13 dBm instead of 20. Total utter sleep mode. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just totally asleep. Yeah. Like not transmitting, not receiving, just chilling. Um, but these are great. So this is, you know, we're going to have another radio that's much, much bigger, but 20 dBm is the limit for a lot of, I, I've noticed it's, it's a lot of ISM bands prefer you stick to about 20 dBm or less, I think. So these are, these are great, super easy, 900 megahertz for, 900 megahertz and 868 for USA and European ISM bands, and then 433 for European okay. ISM bands or amateur radio. All right, good work, Lady Ada. That Sweet. was the new product for the week. Good job. Ooh.